Well, um, first thing I want to explain is about the title. The title, the final title is Open Source in a Developing World. The or original title was Open Source in Developing Countries. Well, the truth is the uh, world uh, has changed and in fact is uh, changing every day. So we have no more developing and developed countries. We are a permanent developing world. So we are speaking here about open source in a developing world, that's why. We are almost finished at the, uh, at the back. So, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Angel Garcia. I come from Madrid. I'm 45. I work with Joomla since uh, 2011. I work with, with the Spanish magazine, Joomla magazine, translating and writing articles, and also very active with the Spanish community, work, uh, helping with the Joomla days, and also sometimes with the Joomla user group from Madrid. Uh, Part-time, I work at the Sierra Leonean Consulate in Madrid. We will speak a little bit more about Sierra Leone later in the presentation. And also I have a pay job in the insurance sector which is not related with the Joomla world. Okay, uh, as said before, we are now in a permanent changing world. Uh, 2015 was a very important, is a very important year for the developing world. Nation, United Nations uh, has released the Sustainable Development Goals, which are 17, which, which we will re revisit later. Um, what are the Sustainable Development Goals? Um, this is all related with the uh, help to the developing countries, but everything has changed there also. Uh, so, uh, sustainable Development Goals are a follow-up effort uh, after the Millennium Development Goals, which started at 2000 and are finishing there. I, I don't know if anyone knows about the Millennium Development Goals. Nobody? Okay, the Millennium Development Goals was the program from the United Nations to help uh, developing countries to get richer, to uh, fight against poverty and illness in, in, in the most important way. And now, uh, 15 years later, there are new goals. They have been called Sustainable Development Goals. And sustainable is... Uh, a uh, very important part of the goals. Everything uh, in the new program has to be sustainable. That means uh, if something is not sustainable, it will be not implemented at the uh, agenda, agenda 2015, okay? We will speak a little bit more about it in a while. Okay, sustainable development goals are the global agenda for the next 15 years has been approved past 25 September from this year at the uh, UN General Assembly, 17th UN General, General Assembly. Okay, uh, before th that uh, was approved, this year has been three very important meetings. First one in July, which wa was in Addis Ababa, and was about financing the new agenda. Normally, developed countries uh, help with official help the, uh, uh, to the other countries, and that, that is changing because right now, well, developed countries are not so good economically, and also UN are looking for new financial foundings, especially from emerging countries. Now we can speak about South, South uh, help, which is directly without the developed countries involved. There is a new global bank, the ASEAN Bank, which will finance 
uh, most of the efforts in China, India, and Africa. Uh, this is the first meeting which was held, as said, in Addis Ababa. The second meeting was, uh, as said, past September, and uh, the new software, uh, sustainable development goals has been approved by the, by the General Assembly in the United Nations. And there is still uh, another meeting which will be held in December in Paris for the Universal Climate Agreement, which should help uh, to fight against climate change, which is a global problem. It's not a country level problem, it's a global problem. And it, it will be in December in Paris, as said. Okay. What are the Sustainable Development Goals? Sustainable Development Goals works in six main ideas. People, dignity, prosperity, justice, partnership, and planet. We have here the full 17 uh, lists, uh, which we, we will explain briefly in a, min in a minute, but sustainable development goals are about inclusion. The whole idea is no one left behind. It's talking about gender equality, care of the elders, care of mental ill persons, care of our youth, Ethnic and other minorities should be respected and be included in everything, in every country. And also, uh, it means reduce inequality within, but also among countries. First of the uh, SDG is the uh, end poverty. The Millennium Development Goals, we have spoke uh, a minute ago, tried to have to cut by half the, the poverty, which, well, some someone said it was uh, uh, possible. And the idea with the first develop, uh, so sustainable development goal is SDG is to end poverty by 2030. Second uh, SDG is about ending hunger. Third development uh, goal is uh, about health. The fourth one is about inclu inclu including everyone. We have to go a little bit fast with that. Gender equality, management and availability of water and sanitation uh, around the world. Uh, sustainable energy for everyone, especially where it's uh, in fault, which is a great part of Asia and Africa. Economic growth. Economic growth is always a thing which, is, uh, which was not necessarily related with sustainability. Now sustainability is in front of the agenda. That means there will be not economic growth there will be not economic growth support if it's not sustainable. Again, sustainability is very important. <clears throat> Building resilient infrastructure. That's, that means basically countries who have problems with in, in emergency situations to recover faster. Okay. Reduce inequality within and among countries. Okay. I, I, there's something I forgot to say. These uh, software, uh, sustainable development countries are not for only uh, least developed countries, they are for every and each country in the world. That means um, there are uh, uh, inequality among countries and there are also inequality within countries. Uh, the best example of that is uh, the European crisis, which uh, has exposed the, this inequality within the same country, and this has to be fight, basically. Uh, 
consumption to we have to consume sustainability without a sustainability we will have problems in the next close future take action to combat climate change that is the agenda which will be discussed in december but it, it, it seems it's very advanced and even china and uh, united states are able to to give options to this climate change fight. Conserve our oceans and sustainable. Protect terrestrial ecosystems. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. Okay, this is the main uh, uh, objects or goals, I, I mean. I want to speak about uh, Costa Rica. Anybody knows Costa Rica? Yeah? You know where Costa Rica is? Where? Uh, south of Mexico. South of Mexico. Central America. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Costa Rica is a small country. GDP per capita is uh, something like $15,000, which is normal thing, in the middle of the table. Position 79th from, I, I think, 187 or so, something like that. So it's not the richest country in the world, but it isn't either the poorest country in the world, okay? I, I will go, go there in a second, but you are right. Good point. Okay. Eldest democracy in Latin America. No dictatorship, never, as, as we know, in, in at, at least last century. No army. Very important. They have uh, 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 conflicts with the neighbors, but they don't have army. They use something what is called smart power, which is persuasion. And if, if they don't can, they go to the international organization, in this case, OSS, which is for Organization of American States. And they are fighting for their rights without army. Persuasion is a new word, smart power. Americans use it a lot, because they are not only the, the biggest uh, actor right now. Okay, The Guardian said, Costa Rica is the world's greenest, happiest country. Costa Rica is known as a leader in placing natural capital at the center of development. The greenest and happiest nation in the world by the independent organization NFF, which is a private foundation, which have developed something called Happy Planet Index. Happy Planet Index, it's about something more than money. And they are year after year being the first or second place in the world. They are economically, as we saw, in the eighth, 18th, eighth, eighth, ah, 80 place in the world, but in happiness and greenness, they are in the first place or second place or third place in the world for the last three years. So the world is changing. People is not only looking for money, they are looking for happiness. Money, but also happiness. Okay, the second very important point for us, for this presentation, is to speak about something called open government partnership. It's very, very related with the sustainable development goals and with the global agenda. Open Government Partnership started, was founded in 2011 uh, with only eight countries. Right now, there are more than 65 countries which promote and discuss open government, open data, transparency, accountability, good practices, and citizen participation. Well, I have uh, 
I brought a video here which I think we will explain it much better than me. Let's go with the video if we are ready. Okay, this is over open government partnership, which I explained before. It's about open government, open data, transparency, accountability, good practices, and citizens' participation. This is not more any, any utopy, it's a reality. And uh, this, w this video was about uh, a few examples about that. Which is the first level of open government? The first level of government is the local governments because local governments works directly with the people, with citizens. So open government is being implemented basically at the local, at the municipal level. Um, they are making great stuff with the open government. There was a submit just like I think 10 days ago in Mexico, where around 2,000 people met and discussed how to implement the open government in each and every uh, local government. Open government is working very, very well in uh, South and uh, Central America. And uh, there are also uh, policy makers, actors, involved. What means policy makers? Policy makers are uh, organizations or committees which are deciding which is the future and what should we, we do, do everywhere. We have two good examples. Which One is the Red, Red Hjalk, which is a name, very complicated name, but it's basically a network <laughs> of e-government leaders, yes, around Latin America and uh, Caribbean. And they are debating and establishing 
uh, an agenda to implement open government and e-government all around the places. There are other kind of policy makers, like, like CLAT, which is Centro Latinoamericano de Administración para el Desarrollo, Spanish name, of course, which is like something like Latin American Center of Administration for Development. These are another uh, committee which are implementing laws and ways to do things at the local level of the administration. There is also an, a thing called MUNET e-government program, which comes from a OAS, which is uh, American State Organization, which is the, the representation of United States in United States, yeah, United Nations, sorry, at Latin America level. Oh, oh American level, also sta United States. Okay, they are working close and they are working uh, with municipal municipalities uh, applying its government and they are already, uh, already working in cases which are uh, very important. Patsun, Patsun in Guatemala is a small town. Well, not so small, but it's a town, 55,000 habitants. They are working with uh, electronic and open government since 2007. And they are doing really great. Jorge Lopez, uh, which is a, a former member of the OSM board, has been done this work for the last years, and it's a very good example how open governments can be applied and implemented all around the world. Here is the, the information about the details, what, what has been done there. Uh, I will share this uh, presentation so, so you can have all the details on it, but we have to move on because we don't have so many time, so much time. So, and another example about Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, who knows where is Sierra Leone in the world? Africa? Where in Africa? Well, yes, it belongs to the same region, West Africa. Okay, Sierra Leone is... Uh, very, very small country. It's a very poor country. Um, its position is 173 from 187 available posi positions. Very, very low GDP per capita, around $2,000 per year. It's also, it's all bad news about Sierra Leone. Uh, it's all, all part of the list called least developed countries, which, which are the four, uh, uh, 48 less, least developed countries around the world. Sierra Leone is also famous for a couple of things. War children, I, I think uh, if, you are, if you remember, there was uh, during the Civil War, uh, uh, Sierra Leone was sadly famous because of war children and sadly famous because of the blue diamonds which has been widely documented and also movies have been done. And now after 12 years of peace Ebola came and appeared to, to, well, to stay there for almost uh, two years. Luckily uh, Ebola is almost gone. There are several weeks without new cases in all the area. And luckily, it will be a bad dream in not so much time. But th there is not everything bad news. Sierra Leona belongs and its member of the OGP, which, which we explained before. Okay, there are people. We are Joomla around in the area, and we have jumblers fighting Ebola. Uh, at a recent edition of the Joomla magazine, there is an interview to Thomas Kaya, 
which is a Liberian guy, which is also a country which was uh, fighting Ebola until the last weeks. I recommend if you can read this article in the Joomla magazine in the English version, it should be very interesting to see how people are doing things with Joomla everywhere and for everything, even fighting Ebola. So you should be asking why should this matter us as Joomla community? Well, basically because we are ready to help all the above mentioned communities all around the globe to communicate, com com communicate and interact between them to build relations inside and amongst communities. We can, as Joomla community, positively contribute to build a better world. But these are not only words, they are examples for that. There is a lot of work to do and we are ready. Uh, I was looking for how many municipalities were around the world. I, I could find this information. There is no way to find this information. But I get one very good example for, the, for this case, which are the local governments in the United States. As you can see in the list, there is one federal government, 50 state governments, 3,034 counties, 19,000 municipalities, 16,000 more townships, and also special purpose, which is fire, police, library, schools, 35 more uh, local governments area in the United States, for a total of 87,000 576 local government uh, places. Well, well, as you see, from only one country, we can get 87,000 local statements. And, uh, well, it's easy to, to say we can, from one country, find 87,000 opportunities to develop a CMS for them. Okay. What do we already have as a Joomla community? Well, uh, I, I know all these days we are, have spoken everyone about a lot, but it's good to, to show it again for the pro purpose. We have already 10 years of history. We are 100% volunteers with a big and growing community. 7,500 extensions, actually uh, 3.x extensions, extensive documentation, community technical support. Our CMS is already translated to more than 65 languages around the world. We have training, we have a certification program. We have the, U U the U Joomla user groups and the Joomla days all over the world. We have two main annual world meetings also. We have a lot of staff and we are ready to help all these communities to have communication between and among them. We have also uh, successful business models already. We have even a site for Joomla uh, uh, Gov information, which is there the link if you want to see them and we are waiting for Joomla 4 in the near future. There are also examples about successful stories in, in government. Mongolia is since 2010 working to government websites based on Joomla. We have also Thailand with more than 1,000 sites for government. Brazil, which is using a lot, uh, also Joomla platform. There is, uh, in, in Brazil, there, is, uh, there was the Joomla day, like, I think a month ago. And uh, th uh, th they are using extensively K2 CCK. You know what KK2 is? 
Would you know what a content creation kit is? Sorry? K2. They're using CCK. Okay, fine. Okay. Which is, this is basically what I wanted to, to explain to you. I am working with Jorge Lopez Bachiller, which I mentioned before. He is a former uh, OSM member, which uh, we have the address there. Or if you want to contact for more, more information, there is also my Twitter account there. And thank you. I don't know if you have questions. Yes, please. Uh, I don't know. I think not. Not yet. But uh, I can check it for you. If you give me just a second, I can tell you pretty fast. I have to check it on the page, web page. I will put on the last page a lot of links with all the information of the different places where you can get information about different organizations, yes? Let me check home. <clears throat> On the Spanish page, maybe. Uh, oh, no, sorry, sorry. This is the summit page. Here it is. No, happy index. Here is the map. No, India is not there. Whole America is, if you can see the map. Part, great part of uh, uh, Europe. Small part of Africa, but uh, at least uh, Sierra Leone is inside. Australia, uh, New Zealand. South Asia and Mongolia, as, uh, as explained before. Great part of uh, Asia is not uh, already there, but it's growing and growing. I mean, in four years, they started with eight countries, and there are 65 countries. I think uh, they will be there sooner or later. But it's not the only way to, to work with open government. Open government. As, as explained, uh, because of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals at every country, including India, has uh, signed this last uh, September, uh, open government is almost mandatory. So in the next two years, every country has to, has to design its own agenda to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. And open government is part of this uh, goals. So India, even if it's not inside this agreement, should be participate with the open government. So there are a lot of opportunities to grow there. And there is also a lot of opportunity for Joomla as platform for in these next two years. The agenda is for 15 years. It has, it has been approved in September, but I think we need around 18 to 24 months to show and know how to implement it in every country. So there is a good opportunity to start working with, with governments, local governments especially, which are, has great potential for that. And Joomla, of course, as, as, as a tool. More questions? No? Okay, thank you very much.